Hey guys, this week we're going where no basics has gone before, the great outdoors. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee to take a look at America's real favorite pastime, grilling. We're teaming up with Ace Hardware to help you correct some common backyard blunders and serve up some more exciting fiery fare than the usual burgers and dogs. Let's get down to basics. All right guys, so let's start the day with some grilled beef and vegetable kebabs. So we're gonna start by making a lemon rosemary marinade. This recipe comes courtesy of America's Test Kitchen. We're gonna start by roughly chopping up a medium onion, two tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary, then peeling and roughly chopping six medium garlic cloves, just chop them up a little bit. We're gonna put everything in a food processor. I'm also going to grate the zest from one lemon and add the juice from the lemon. Now we're going to add one third of a cup of beef broth plus one third of a cup of vegetable oil, a few hefty pinches of kosher salt, a much less hefty pinch of white sugar, and many, many twists of freshly ground black pepper. Then three heaping squeezes of tomato paste, or about three tablespoons. We're now going to process this for about a minute until completely smooth, and there you go marinade. Now it's time to get our beef and vegetables ready. We're going to start with either chuck or sirloin tips that we're going to cut into relatively uniform sizes. We want them to be about two inches by two inches. The more uniform the better so they cook evenly. As for the vegetables, we're going to break them down into, again, relatively evenly sized pieces. I'm going to have this zucchini lengthwise and then cut it into one inch segments. Now there's a lot of tips and tricks about how to core your pepper, but really the key is to cut the head off and rip its heart out. Kalima. And then we're just going to cut the peppers into one to one and a half inch pieces. Lastly, we've got a large red onion that we're going to cut in half, take out the core, cut into wedges, and then cut each of those wedges into three or four pieces so we've got nice one inch wide chunks of red onion. And now it's time to marinate both the beef and the vegetables. We're going to add most of the marinade, maybe about three quarters of it to the beef, mix it up good, make sure that every piece is covered in marinade, and we're going to add the remaining mixture, probably about a half a cup's worth, to the vegetables, give them a good toss, cover both, let the beef marinate for one hour in the fridge and the vegetables marinate for one hour at room temperature. One hour later and it's time to skewer. You probably know how to do this, I don't think I need to instruct you, but all you really need to do is skewer the meat and press it tightly against one another. Make sure you don't ow, ow, get your finger. And with the vegetables, just alternate between each type of vegetable so you get a nice pleasing pattern going. Most people put both the meat and the vegetables on the same skewer. This doesn't work. Why not put meat on one skewer and vegetables on another? This way they can cook at their own desired rates. All right, we're gonna bring our skewers over to the grill, open her up, and uh, hmm, how do I do this? No, my God, who? Hi, I'm Shannon, your local Ace Associate, and I'm here to help you get started with your grill. This particular grill is a Weber Genesis E310 propane grill. All you need to do is turn the knobs in front of you to the light position, hit the igniter button, and it'll start right up. Also, you'll see with the three different knobs here, you can heat sections of the grill to different temperatures for different foods. That's perfect because I need to cook the steak over high heat and the vegetables over medium. Oh my God, whoa. Nashville truly is a magical place. So first we're gonna let this grill preheat over high heat for 15 minutes. Lid closed, get it hot. Now that our grill is preheated, I'm going to turn the left two burners down to medium and keep the right burner on hot. And we're going to put the steak on the right side of the grill and the vegetables on the left. Then we're going to close the lid and let these cook for six minutes before flipping for the first time. Then we're going to close it back up cook for an additional six minutes for 12 minutes total before we check our meat's temperature. I want to hit about 125. I'm also going to take one of these kebabs off first and leave the other ones on for another couple minutes for anybody who wants them a little bit more well done, aka people who are wrong. And as for the vegetables, we're going to leave those on for an additional five to six minutes until they've got a really good char on them and they're nice and soft. All right, so let's get all these skewers out onto a tray. Nice. And there you go. Perfect kebabs. Easy, fast, delicious. All right, so next up, we're going to make a grilled pork tenderloin. Again, courtesy of America's Test Kitchen, we're making a piquillo pepper and manchego stuffed pork tenderloin. Let's start by making our stuffing. Now, making the stuffing is very simple. We just need to throw the following items into a food processor. Two garlic cloves, peeled and roughly chopped. One slice of hearty white bread. In this case, we didn't have any white bread, so a hot dog bun will do just fine. A whole jar of piquillo peppers, padded dry. Two ounces of manchego cheese, chopped up. A quarter cup of toasted pine nuts. A teaspoon of minced fresh thyme. And a good sprinkle of smoked paprika. Go ahead and pulse that four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine times until a rough paste is formed. At this point, we're going to season with salt and pepper, process a few more times until we've got a nice chunky stuffing. And now it's time to butterfly and stuff our pork tenderloins. So to butterfly our pork tenderloins, very easy. We're just going to place some cuts lengthwise along the side of the pork tenderloin until we've almost hit the other side and open it up like a book. Then we're going to cover both tenderloins in plastic wrap and we're just gonna pound one out. We wanna pound them out to about a half inch thickness, and so they're nice, even rectangles, as best we can. Then once they're pounded out, we're gonna season them before stuffing them. Nice, hefty sprinkles of kosher salt, many good twists of freshly ground black pepper, and about four teaspoons of dark brown sugar that we're going to rub into the meat, make sure it's equally distributed. Now it's time to stuff with both our cheese and bread stuffing and some baby spinach. We're going to start by spreading half of the stuffing on each of the pork tenderloins on one end of the long side of the roast and topping that with some baby spinach. And then we're going to roll the whole darn thing up. And as is the case with doing a recipe for the first time, always have two so you can mess one up and then do the second one correctly. Both of these we're going to tie closed with butcher's twine. Again, we're going to do a terrible job on the first one and then a much better job on the second one. You don't really need to do the full truss. You can just tie it off using a simple square knot every inch and a half to two inches or so to make sure the whole thing stays closed. And then trim the excess string to make sure that it's not hanging off and burning. And there you go. All right, so these guys are ready for the grill. Let's take them over to the gas grill and- Oh, jeez. Hey, Andrew, since you're going to be temping these tenderloins, why don't you use the iGrill 3? Even though you scare the life out of me, you're awfully helpful. Why, thank you. The iGrill 3 lets you monitor the temperature of your food through the iGrill app on your mobile device. It's super easy to set up. All you have to do is pair it with your device via Bluetooth, plug the probes into the thermometer, and insert them into your food. Set your desired temperature in the app, and it will notify you when your food is ready. So this is perfect so I can monitor the temperature of these roasts. Oh, holy dear. Okay. Now that Shannon has disappeared once again into the unknown, it's time to get these tenderloins grilling. We need to make sure that the stuffing of these roasts hits 165 degrees because it is in contact with raw meat. This time we're going to use what's called an indirect heat source, meaning we're going to turn the right burner all the way to maximum and the left two burners all the way to low and placed the roasts over the left side of the grill. So once we close the lid, they're getting heated almost like in an oven, but they're also getting grill marks. We're gonna flip them about halfway through cooking, which should be about 30 minutes, or as soon as they register 165 degrees Fahrenheit internally, which we'll monitor on our phones because this is 2018. These guys are fresh off the grill, so let's slice these babies up. And there you have it, two pork tenderloins. One is beautiful on the outside, but both are beautiful on the inside, just like all of you. So now we've got some beautiful sausages and chicken wings. I feel like infusing some wood-fired flavors. So let's take them over to the wood-fired grill. This thing looks pretty easy. Let's just uh, crank it on. But, whoa, what the, what is this? Don't do that. Is this Shannon? Is she about to appear behind me? Oh my God, Shannon, you are haunting me with helpfulness. You're welcome, Andrew. I want to make sure you set up your Traeger Pro 22 correctly. On first use, you need to run the wood fire grill on high for 45 minutes to make sure you burn off all the oils that protect it from the elements while it's shipped your way. Grilling with a Traeger wood fire grill is easier than you think. Since it uses convection cooking instead of direct heat, it's similar to cooking in an oven but provides a delicious smoky flavor. You can grill, smoke, roast, bake, braise, and barbecue all on the same grill. It's pretty awesome. To get cooking, you just fill the hopper with pellets, turn it on, and select the setting you need. It's so easy to use. Also included with the Traeger are these digital probes that fit through the side of the unit so you can monitor the temperature of your food without having to open it and lose the beautiful smoke and heat building inside. Oh cool, I can use these to monitor the temperature of my sausage. I'm going to, oh my God. Okay, just remember Andy, it's all cheap special effects. All right, so I'm going to arrange the chicken wings on the bottom half of the smoker and the sausage on the top rack. I'm gonna close it up and let the sausages go until they reach an internal temp of 165 Fahrenheit. For the chicken, I'm gonna leave them on for 30 minutes flipping once. Right at the end, I'm gonna slather them with barbecue sauce and crank the heat up to high to get a nice barbecue crust. And there you have it, some simple chicken wings and sausages elevated to a new level with the help of smoke. A big thanks to Ace for providing the grills and helping make this episode happen. We've got a lot of new, exciting things in store for the channel, and they would not be possible without great partners like Ace. Check me out next week on May 10th on Twitch, where I'm going to be live streaming these from Nashville. We'd love for you guys to join and cook along with me. We're going to be doing a rare daytime live stream. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you next week.